Well, good morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, I welcome you to the worship and the fellowship of Delisle Community Chapel. Whether you are with us here in the sanctuary or whether you are joining us online, we hope that you will sense the presence of Jesus with us. That's the reason we get together. We're inspired by Jesus to love God, to love people, and to make disciples. Shall we pray? Our Father God, we want to thank you so very much that we are here together, and we know that you are here. And none of us is here by accident. We're here by divine appointment. You want to do something in our lives today. You want to make a difference. You want to make us more like Jesus. You want to show us how to love like Jesus. So, Father, whether we are here in the sanctuary or joining from our homes online, do as you please in our lives today, in our families, in our town. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No, you won't kick down that. 
this morning's psalm comes from Psalm 23. It's a pretty popular psalm, so if you want, you can say it along with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
to read uh, two more passages of scripture with you this morning. Uh, first of all, from uh, John's Gospel, John chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 11 through 18. Jesus is speaking. He probably has Psalm 23 in mind when he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. 
The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Our next reading comes from one of the letters that John wrote. 1 John chapter 3, and we will read verses 14 through 24. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. Well, this morning we've heard three different passages of Scripture. Psalm 23, which we uh, read together with Sierra, John chapter 10, and now 1 John chapter 3. And I'm going to be drawing on all three of these passages. We won't have time to go in depth into any of them, but there are some connections between these passages that I'd like us to see this morning. Just love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. We begin by revisiting Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is the best known and the most loved of all the Psalms. If you have any Bible knowledge at all, you probably have some experience with it often in church. You've heard it at funerals. It begins with the famous first line, the Lord is my shepherd. This is a beautiful metaphor. The metaphor is the shepherd and the sheep. Yahweh is our shepherd. We have everything that we need. I'm 23 this week. I, uh, I noticed how much we have because of the fact that God is our shepherd. We have provision. The Lord is my shepherd. I We have companionship. 
even though I walk through the darkest valley. We have comfort. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We have protection. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And at this point, we're going to just take a little break because I see we're having technical difficulties. that. That's working? All right. We have everything that we need. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just back up a little bit because I'm not quite sure where um, we uh, dropped out. Um, Psalm 23. I think we're a little bit too loud now, aren't we, here in the sanctuary? Okay. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll carry on. Um, because the Lord, Yahweh, is our shepherd, we have everything we need. We have provision. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. We have refreshment. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. We have guidance. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. We have companionship. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We have comfort. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We have protection. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We have abundance. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me. We have goodness and love forever. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The love that God has for us is a love which transcends death. It goes on through all of life and even beyond this life. In John's Gospel, Jesus self-identifies as the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. In fact, he says it twice in verse 11 of John chapter 10 and again in verse 14. I am the good shepherd. In biblical times, the shepherd was absolutely responsible for the sheep in his care. In many cases, the shepherd had actually grown up in a shepherding family. He'd grown up with the flock, and he had a love for the flock. It was, to a shepherd, the most natural thing in the world to risk his life to save his sheep. You may remember the story of David and Goliath. Prior to going out to fight Goliath, David had to convince Saul that he was up to the task. So he told King Saul, that in his work as a shepherd, he had fought with a lion and with a bear to save his sheep. You know that he was putting his life at risk when he fought a lion and a bear. Sometimes the shepherd had to do more than risk his life. He actually had to die in defense of the flock, especially when thieves and robbers came. And they did come. A good shepherd never hesitated to risk his own life and even to lay down his life for the love of his sheep. And that is what Jesus did. He showed the depth of his love for us by laying down his life, dying on the cross, and by taking up his life again, his resurrection. 
This is how we know what love is, the Bible says. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Just think about that. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. The following sentence is one which really gives me pause. It says, And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In other words, we are to love like Jesus. Sir Ernest Shackleton was a famous explorer in Antarctica. He made three exploratory trips to Antarctica with a team of men attempting, and in fact at one point succeeding in traveling further south on the planet than anyone had ever gone before. For his explorations, he was knighted, given the title of Sir Ernest Shackleton. He was asked on one occasion to tell his most terrible experience. He said, it happened one night in an emergency hut. He and his men were in a desperate situation. They were lying there, trying to get some rest, some sleep. He was a little apart from the others. On that day, they had just distributed the last of their rations. There was no more food once this was gone. They'd all received one final biscuit. That's all that there was to divide. There was no more. As they lay there in the hut, every man thought that the others were asleep. And then Shackleton heard a stealthy movement. He saw one of his men reach over the man next to him and take his biscuit bag. He opened it and he removed the one remaining biscuit. Shackleton felt sick. It was the worst moment of his life. He had trusted this man with his very life, and now he was turning out to be a thief under the most trying circumstances. Stealing a man's last biscuit. He continued to watch as the man opened his own bag. And then he took out his last biscuit and put both biscuits in his comrade's bag. And then he stealthily replaced it at the man's side. Shackleton said, I dare not tell you the man's name. I felt that it was an act that was a secret between himself and God. That man had risked the very real possibility of starvation in order to save another. That is an example of laying one's life down for a brother. Now, there are actually two ways in which a person may lay down their life for a brother or a sister. One is by dying for another. That is what Jesus did. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. It may seem unlikely that any person here today would be called upon to die in order to save the life of another, but it is certainly not beyond the realm of possibility that that could happen. The second way of laying down our lives for others is by living for them. This is where the rubber really hits the road. Scripture says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, 
How can the love of God be in that person? DCC, Delilah Community Chapel, the, the church family that meets here, exists for the purpose of loving God, loving people, and making disciples. Scripture says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech only, but with actions and in truth. As your pastor, I am privileged at times to become aware of many acts of Christ-like love that are carried out by people from this church family. I know of people who give generously, even sacrificially, to help some other person or family in a time of need. It, it happens on a, on a regular basis, and I know that it happens far more even than what I know of. Just by way of example, a person from our church family who has some big financial challenges of their own spent hundreds of dollars to put tires on the car of a single mother. Now, I'm not going to tell you who did that. But if you come to me afterwards and ask me who it was, I'm still not going to tell you who did that. Because that's not the point. They didn't do it to be known. There's nothing wrong with being seen giving, by the way. But it is, it loses a lot when you give for the purpose of being seen. That individual and many others like them did it for love. Love for Jesus and love for another person. That kind of thing has happened many, many times in the life of our church. And I pray that it will happen more and more and more in ways that are big and small. We cannot all do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. Love like Jesus. Love others with the love of Jesus. Allow his love to flow through you, to bless your brothers and sisters in amazing ways. There's a song that we used to sing when I was a young person. Pass it on. And uh, let's see, how did that go? What a wondrous thing is spring when all the trees are budding, the birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you experience it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. I think that's the second verse. What's the first verse? It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. You want to love like Jesus. And this is God's command, Scripture says, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another, as he commanded us. It is not unusual to have doubts from time to time. There may even be occasions when you wonder, am I really a Christian at all? Especially if you've just blown it big time in some way. John gives us the test by which we may know for sure that we are in a relationship with God that is real. And it is love. Love. If you have love for your fellow man, for your brothers and sisters in God's great family, that is the evidence that the Spirit of God is in your life and that you are alive in Him. Today, God, we want to thank you that this springtime brings the promise of new life, 
We're especially glad that you've given us through Jesus uh, a new life that, that is not only uh, for here and now, but is for the hereafter and lasts forever. We put ourselves in your care. We ask that you would help us this week in very practical ways to love like Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service, my prayer and my challenge for you is that you would love like Jesus this week. Love other people with the very love of Jesus that flows through you by the power of his spirit so that others will see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly father. God bless you today.